Well, howdy, 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 everybody. Teresa here. It is um, August 7th, 2022. It is after 7. 7.43. 7.43. Whoa. P.M. Um, Sunday evening. And I'm just coming to you now. We just woke up. I know I look probably look like we just woke up from naps that we hadn't planned on taking. <laughs> You know, we worked so hard yesterday to get all our chores done. So today we could, I'm going to do dishes when I get done with this okay. real quick. Um, so that we could do whatever we want today. Well, apparently we wanted to sleep. <laughs> We're both sitting there kind of watching um, uh, TV and I was watching uh, um, YouTube videos. And I fell asleep and he did too. I think we took about a two and a half hour nap or I did anyway. Yeah. Must have needed it. It was a bit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I had to laugh because, you know, that's what we worked so hard to do was uh, so we could do that. But, hey, it's been a good Sunday. been a real good Sunday. Um, can't ask for any better. I wanted to kind of start. I am enjoying doing the daily vlogs. I don't know if I'll always do an everyday vlog. I think thinking even if I start back doing daily vlogs, I might take Sundays off, you know. Um, but, I, well, probably not if I'm going to announce this next thing. Is I think Sunday should be a day that maybe we sit and think about things that we're grateful for in our current life. It's easy for all of us to become very complacent. And I know I'm really guilty of it. And complain about the things that are wrong in our life. I'll complain to Brad about it. Try not to do too much, but because um, you know, nobody, nobody has a perfect life, and nobody is not a, the fairy tale that we grew up thinking it would be. But I think we become very complacent about where we're at now compared to where we were. Um, you know, and it's, like I said, it's also very easy to keep looking back at when we were younger and able to do more things. But, so I wanted to kind of start a thing where um, maybe we sit and think about things we're grateful for. And I'll tell you guys some things I'm grateful for in my current life. I wrote down some because, you know, I'm older and I might forget. And please forgive me, but I am going to have, 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 you know, a cigarette while I do this. Um, the first thing I want to do, though, before we, we start this, is I want to ask anybody that has knowledge about a Subaru car, if you're a mechanic or anything, if you could leave a message in a way I could get a hold of you. My friends, the neighbors, if you know them, go over to them and leave them a message. Uh, here on YouTube, and the, the neighbors, they live in New Hampshire. They have a, new, a Subaru that... that Kevin has done everything he knows how to do on it, and the car still won't run. And they really need to get this fixed. And they really don't want to have to put it on, have it towed, because that will cost a lot of money. Uh, money that they just don't really have to spend. So, um, if you guys do, let me know. Also, go over to the channel, check them out, subscribe to them. We're kind of doing a cross-referencing thing. So any of you that guys that are creators, if you have your own channel, if you could give me a shout out, I'll give you a shout out. I would really love to get this over a thousand so I could become monetized. That would be nice. And also I've been on YouTube for probably over 10 years now. And I really would like to get where I stay over a thousand would be nice. Then I wouldn't be able to, you know, to, to have a cigarette or anything on, on here, so... Which would be fine. <laughs> but, forgive me. Things that I'm grateful for in our current life right now is um, a front door and a back door. And that sounds funny. But to have, now it's not a screen door. They don't do those really very much now. But it's a glass door, an outside glass door. And that's very nice to be able to open up and look outside. Um, and, uh, I know, I know the dogs love it. Uh, when we had a cat, she loved it. Um, and having a view, because 
the last place we were at in Florida, it really wasn't any kind of a view. It was really more of a jungle, and there was a dilapidated falling down trailer next door. So, you know, there wasn't anything to see on the other side of the trailer because it was all overgrown with trees. So, you felt very much closed in. Um, another thing we're very grateful for is the washer dryer. Living in the ghetto trailer, there was no washer dryer. There was not even hookups. Um, so, we had, and our friend Carol had gotten, gifted us a um, small washer with a spinner that you set in your tub. And we use, I use that thing like crazy. And then when Brad was home, he did too. It would do loads about maybe a fourth the size of a normal washing machine. Um, and you had to keep going back uh, to uh, fill it up again. You had to manually fill it up and then have like the water spin out and stuff. But, you know, and then you need to hang your clothes up. So this was an all day process just to do a couple normal loads. But that was that was for us was wonderful i mean but we'd have to go to laundromat to do anything like um blankets you know comforter and stuff so i'm very grateful to have a washer dryer now uh that is so nice you know uh uh having a working stove the ghetto trailer had a um burner that always shocked you and um that was very problematic, and the, the oven was really strange. I mean, it did not cook evenly or anything. Uh, not having, or having central air. I've never lived in a place before that had central air. Um, you know, most of the time in Wyoming, apartments don't really have even any air conditioning or homes. If you do, it's usually swamp cool. A few places had had central air um which is very nice um and then th th like living in florida it was it was the uh, ac units um you know which we were grateful for those we you know we only had one home that had a swamp cooler it wasn't bar none yeah and um you know we are used to just having your windows open and you would walk around in a wet t-shirt deliberately wet it put it back on and then stand in front of a fan to survive it worked but you know so having central air is a real big treat i never live you know in a home like i said before with it and it's so nice not having a bad landlord that does not want to fix anything now you guys know we, we are having issues with getting um, Clayton Homes, True Homes, to fix anything on the warranty. We've been going back and forth, and we still are, and, and we've escalated that. I'm not going to go into details on that, um, but, you know, we're fighting for our right. And um, But having a bad landlord that doesn't want to fix anything, and anything he has to fix is your fault. The leaky sink, I don't know how many times that they went, came over to fix that, never, never got it right. The uh, roof that leaked severely, um, the one time the water would not, um, there was a problem with the water, something in the line all of a sudden. Well, we knew that they had shut off the water down at the trailer that burned down, and that's kind of kind of interesting that all of a sudden then we had major sewer problems but no that had to be our fault finally it was figured out that no it wasn't um uh one time we had electricity just go out well our daughter happened to be visiting and they did have a bus plugged in but they weren't running anything at the time and no of course it had to be our fault and it wasn't um there's just so many other cases like that um from the windows that you could see through around the bottom the plexiglass that, we, uh, that replaced the actual glass. And that stuff never, I mean, you know, when it's just pieces of it and it's still gapped and stuff, I mean, uh, so you have frogs getting in your, in your home, even up in your toilet. That was freaky. Lizards. And then, you know, we want to talk about how many bugs. 
and stuff. So, I mean, to have, while we might be fighting with, with True Homes about fixing what is under warranty on this place, um, at least, you know, it's minor compared to what we were putting up with. Yep. So, those are the things I'm very grateful for. I am grateful, um, that, uh, Brad is home. Uh, it's nice to spend more time with him. We're getting used to that change in our relationship now. And, um, uh, you know, it's a big adjustment for both people. When all of a sudden your husband has retired or become disabled, whichever it is, but all of a sudden they're home, it's a big adjustment for both of you. Um, you know, and, but we're, we are getting used to that. Getting along much better. I'm grateful that we've been able to save our marriage. Because you guys know that have watched us for a while. At a certain point in time, we were not sure. And you guys did not know how close we were to, you know, separating. And, um, but we managed to work through it. You know. Managed to do a lot of forgiveness on both parts. And... Stop thinking about getting back the person that was, that they used to be because nobody can go back in time. You have to accept each other how you are now. We're completely different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, it was a struggle, you know, because there were, there were so many changes, you know, and uh, I know one of the things I went through was um, not not having to not getting to talk to so many people in the course of a day you know it and, has to be uh, hard yeah you know and and i know i got i got in uh i was in your face way way too much you know and that's what i've learned to to give you your space too you know because there's you definitely you definitely do need that no well, i'm used to being home alone or was and, yeah, I mean, he talked to a lot of people in the course of a day. And, um, you know, that has to be a huge adjustment. Like I said, not only for me, him. He felt, he felt very lost. Being disabled meant that it wasn't like he just would normally retire and then be able to go do whatever he wanted. Because all of a sudden he's facing a disability that was getting much worse. And, you know, we still, we still deal with that disability to this day. We don't say a whole <laughs> lot about it. The hip has gotten better, but he still has, you know, significant balance problems and the neuropathy. And then his back, his back is just kind of a game changer. It is really, is very painful for him. There's a lot of nights that neither one of us can sleep and he, he comes back. And I'll put some muscle rub on him, and and we'll sit and talk for a while, let his pain meds hit. If I'm in pain, let mine hit, and then, you know, finally go to sleep. But it's been a huge adjustment. And um, one of the things that helped, it sounds kind of funny, save our marriage, was this little dog. Because we adopted this little dog, you know, over a year ago, but she would come right in between us. And you can't stay mad at the other person when you're both petting this dog, you know, and stuff. And, um, you know, uh, so I'm grateful that we've been able to save it. Like I said, you have to learn that that person is not, if you're in a long-range marriage, a long, that that person is never going to be the person they used to be. And you're never going to be the person you were. Look at how you were when you first met or got married. You're so different. I mean, if I was the same person I was 34 years ago, there would be something really wrong with me at this age. <laughs> you know, I was 23 when we got married. Was I 23 or 24? 23. 23 when we got married. That was my second marriage. He oh, was, no, you were 24. I thought I was 24. Yeah. Um, well, I was 23 when we met. Yeah. But I had a birthday right before we got married. Me too. That was 24 years old. He was 28. He'd never been married before. Um, but if we were the same per people, I mean, I don't look the same. 
in some ways. Some ways I do. Um, I'm a lot more mature most days. <laughs> you know, we all have our shining moments. We're like, holy moly. I can't stand myself. How do you stand me? But, um, you know, I mean, everything is so different. And we've all, we've had all these experiences and events. And also, you know, when you have depression that plays into one or both of you, it really, really affects your marriage. You cannot, how can it not? There's times that that depression is, will ruin your marriage if you let it. If the other person doesn't understand. Or that you think that getting rid of that person is going to make you happy. If you're unhappy, you're unhappy. You can be unhappy with that person. You can be unhappy alone. But if it deep down you're unhappy, that's something you're going to have to work on. I feel. I'm not an expert. I can just go off of myself. Um, you know, and that's one thing I looked at. I wasn't going to be any happier without Brad than I was with him. In fact, he's my very best friend in the whole world. I mean, we would still have to call and talk all the time and stuff. I mean... You know, we still like to hang out all the time, so, you know, and I love him, and I know he loves me. We've been through a lot. Every memory I have usually includes him. I mean, you know. And who would have got custody of the children? Oh, yeah, and that was one thing we did discuss, you guys. That's how close we were to separating. A couple of things that saved us was financially we really could not afford to have two households. Without really messing up this household, you know, and also who would get custody, and we did talk about that. Who was going to take what pet? And then, so I at one point in time and thought, well, you know, I would go get an, get an apartment, and I would take Jelly Bean. And then it's like, yeah, but she has to come over and visit because she's getting has gotten pretty attached to Brad already. And then the two big dogs, they've always had me at home, and that would be such a big adjustment for them and, and what would be best for them. So then we decided at one point in time, okay, we would stay together but be separated. And essentially we were for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but then, I mean... Because of mainly because of the dogs, I know that sounds really silly and the cat at that time, but you know you have a responsibility to your children, your, or you know in this case our pets, uh, you know and um, like I said, but it's very hard when you're that's your best friend too, and when you love them and when you think, what am I gonna you know what about holidays and what about you know, just everyday events, and, you know, then we start talking about, well, will you still go to the doctor with me? Because we both have white coat syndrome, and I know a lot of you guys do, so even if it's me that's getting examined, I'll forget half of what they tell me, and Brad will remember, and vice versa. So then it's like, well, will you still go with me for this? At that point, we had one vehicle. That was going to be an issue. I mean, and then Brad needed, at that point in time, is before he had hips replacement surgery. He still needed quite a bit of help. You guys don't know how much help he needed here at the, at the house. But I was doing a lot for him. Mm -hmm. And with him. So he didn't fall more and stuff. So, I mean, uh, you know. So, I think everything happened for a reason. And thankfully, we pulled our heads out of our rear ends. And, you know, it's like, you know, I still love this person. And I had to start taking a big step back. And so did Brad and realizing that this is our spouse now, not what they were. Because we would both say to each other, I wish you were like you used to be. And then it's like, I can't be how I used to be. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I can't do the things I did when I was, I can't do, do them the same way anyway as I did even 20 years ago. So, I mean, and then you look at the person now, and it's like, if I met you now, and we started talking, would I still probably fall in love with him? Yes. You know, he, and two, you look at, does he, do that, do, 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 <laughs> does that person still have those redeeming qualities 
that made you first like them and then love them and fall in love with them? And if the answer is yes, you can still see those good qualities, there's your answer. Keep working on the marriage. You can't always save every marriage. That's so true. There's some marriages that should never have happened. We all know people like that. You know, but I'm glad in our case we were able to save our marriage. You know, is it perfect? No. Is any marriage perfect? No. It's just like, is any life perfect? Are there things we're going to still complain about, you know, that the other person does that irritates us? Oh, yeah. You know, and are, are we still going to complain about our current living situation? Oh, yeah. You know, nothing is perfect. But then you have to realistically think, like, as much as we would love to buy some land and move either the trailer on it or buy a double wide moving on it, is it going to happen? I don't know. You know, we've discussed it in 10 years. We may want to go back to apartment living simply because then you have somebody else be responsible for the repairs. And also, as you age, and since we have no family, you know, especially no family close, that they will ch check on you, you know, if depending on the level of assistance you need. So, you know, and that's something that we think about, you know, and discuss. So, you know, whatever's supposed to happen again will happen. So, anyway, those are just things I'm grateful for. I am very grateful for Brad. You know, like I said, he is my best friend. He is the one person I know that truly loves me besides my animals. I can tell you unequivocally that he, this man loves me. And I think he knows that I love him. Mm -hmm. We are not, neither one of us are walking the park. We, all, we have our shiny moments, Lord. And I think sometimes you think, if that person could still even want to be near me after my shiny, you know, you know, uh, uh, event yesterday or earlier today, then bless them. <laughs> you know, because like I got, well, I couldn't stand myself. You ever been in such a bad mood, ladies? Basically, if you were PMSing, that you couldn't stand yourself, I've been there. I would even tell Brad, I I need to just lock myself in a room huh. by myself. Because I knew it was that bad, you know. Um, and uh, he told me I was mild compared to some women he's seen in the store. But, you know, you think it's your spouse, you know... Uh, if they can still put up with me after, you know, because, you know, sometimes you'll hear, I've gotten a lot better, but sometimes you'll hear something come out of your mouth, and you're like, what? <laughs> wow. You know, I've heard my father, um, my father had a very bad temper, and he was, he could be very, very abusive, and also very abusive verbally, and sometimes I would hear something come out of my mouth, and I'm like, Wow. You need to check yourself, you know, you know, don't be taking out your bad mood on on him, you know, or anything. So, uh, you know, and then also getting the toxic people out of my life, getting the very toxic family members out of my life. I kind of have a saying that don't try to keep somebody in your life that doesn't want to be there. And even no matter how much you love a family member, if they don't want to be in your life, don't keep letting them have that space in your head and in your heart. Because they don't want to be there. We can't change that. You know, so I work a lot harder on that now. And, yes, you know, do. don't, let, don't let them rent your head space. Because they will. If you know it's kind of like if somebody does something really crappy to you and it really hurts you, and it affects you for a long time, but they go on about their day and they don't give it another thought. They're going on to the next person to do that too. You know, so, you know, I'm just very grateful for the life we have now. Um, I do believe everything does happen for a reason and, um, you know, even if we don't understand ever. Right? Yep. Exactly. Do you have anything to say? You know, I mean, pretty much 
I'm going to say a lot of the same things that you just said, you know, and it's, it's, um, it, it does take some conscious adjustment, um, with the changes as we get older, you know, I know I'm not the person that I was even five years ago. Right. And, uh, neither um, am I. Yeah. You know, and, and, uh. Things are it, sagging and dragging. A lot of it is, I mean, there's a lot of physical changes, but there's also, there's also a lot of, of uh, mental, mental and emotional yeah. changes. Yeah. You know, because uh, um, there's times that, that I've thought in the past that I could fix the whole world. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, you know, when you come to realize that you don't have control of the whole world, that you just have control of your little part of it and yeah. you need to make you need to make the absolute best of that what with what you've been given yeah. as you possibly can yeah you know and there's i know there's some things that i took out on you and you had absolutely nothing to do with it and right. that was very very wrong of me and you vice know, versa you know and uh because um, if you're unhappy you're unhappy you're not gonna be happy with anybody and you may take it out on a person very close to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and um, even uh, six, seven years ago, you know, I could I could pick up a refrigerator and walk away with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just, I can't, I can't do that stuff anymore. So yeah. I've got to, I've got to adjust my uh, way of physically doing things and then also that's just that is kind of echoed in the way i've got to adjust the mental way of doing things you know and that can be hard i mean i think we both thought when brad had his hip replacement surgery he was going to come out of there walking and being just like he was 20 years ago we we logically knew that wasn't going to happen but emotionally you think that's going to happen and then after he did it went surgery and he did so well but then he still has, I mean, the hip is, is good. But he still has the balance problems. He still has the back problems. With the back, he knows it's even more now because the hip pain is gone. You know, he's got some knee pain. He wears knee brace sometimes. Um, and I think that was kind of depressing for you. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he kind of hit a standstill there. I think... His father and stepmother being in assisted living really hit you hard, too. Um, we've seen, you know, that his dad is struggling a lot more for words and stuff. Uh, you know, but, I mean, they may have some good news coming their way pretty soon. That they may get to go to their home, you know, in, in a month or so, if everything works out okay. And that's, that's another... Another thing that I keep kicking myself for, you know, is with with um, that whole that whole situation. I mean, um, it was um, there were there are a lot of things that I had to come to terms with, you know, and uh, um, you know I've changed a little bit in sixty years, mm -hmm. and you know he has too. And uh, there was another person that I gave way too much mm -hmm. credit and support, and that was never, ever going to be there. Mm -hmm. I mean, and uh, um, there was, there was, I spent way too much time beating myself up because I could not get what I thought I needed out of the relationship. The approval and, then, and stuff, yeah. You know, and then there's this other person here where, where, it's funny because we've been talking a year. Yeah. And even <laughs> and even in in a month, he's told me I love you more times than than you know. hear her. And uh yeah, she's being silly. She's on the floor rolling around being silly. <laughs> You're still in the way to show. Yeah. I know. You happy girl that's jelly bean yeah. doing that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I wouldn't beat yourself up about that. Everything does happen at the right time. And you guys could have talked 10 years earlier, 20 years earlier, and it wouldn't have been the same. Another thing I'm going to say straight out is your mom had difficulty with 
I don't think your mom ever had closure on what no. happened between her and his, his birth father. And because when you started talking with even your brother and stuff, she started really pushing yeah. about your birth father, about yeah. wanting answers. Yeah. And I, I know she even was emailing him for a while and he had to block her. Yeah. Because, you know, that was so long ago and they needed to move on. Yep. She needed her closure, whatever, but this was Brad's relationship with his father, not, you know, her chance to get some closure. I mean, both of our daughters chose to meet their birth father you know, when they were of age, and I, I never even interfered in it a bit. I, I, I didn't want anything to do with him, but, you know, they have every right to have that relationship if they want, you know. Um, but I think everything happens when it's mm -hmm. supposed to. I mean, I think that would have been hard for your mom because at one point in time you were thinking about going to, to a family reunion, and she wanted to come with us. Yeah. She's... She invited herself. She wanted to come with us, which I thought was very odd, you know. And it would have been super uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Super, super uncomfortable. Yeah. We ended up not going. I don't think they had the family radio yet. I don't think they did either. You know, but, you know, everything happens for a reason. Well, I'm thrilled that you have the relationship you do with him, you know. Well, and one of the, one of the points I guess I was getting at that I, I uh, went on my happy little tangent is uh, one of the things was, uh, um, you know, yeah, I get upset because it's really, really funny that that he was not a part of my life until, you know, a year ago. Right. And finding out how much, how much we had in, in, in common. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, just, you know, he, he's, he's a rock hound. Yeah. And. <laughs> And I have been, I have been that. He is, um, 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 he was in uh, construction mm -hmm. and I do a lot of, I do a lot of woodworking, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just, it's just these so things you want that are, to do a lot of I it. want to do a lot of woodworking. I don't get to do near as much as I want to, but. Well, when we get the house put all together, you yeah. will have a lot more time. Yeah. We both will. Yep. Yeah. You know, but that's what I get upset is because. You know, um, we just we just came into each other's lives, right? You know, and I want a chance to get to know him better. And uh, he's eighty three years old, right? You know, so, so we're not sure of it yet, but we're kind of hoping that if we can afford to, mm -hmm. that we maybe send Brad um, in October or something if they're home and if everything's going okay. That that maybe we send him there to spend, you know, some time with his dad just alone. Just kind of a casual, you know, I like to see even stay up to a couple of weeks and, and just a casual, you know, mm -hmm. hey, let's just go out to the rock shop and, 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 you know, enjoy that. I'm sure they have a ton of pictures they could show. Oh, I'm yeah. sure so many stories. And I think it would be very, very good for both of them. Yeah. So well, and, and I don't know if we can afford the... the airfare but we're gonna see what we can do you could i mean if we had to you could even take a train out there yeah well and mom put together uh um, a photo album mm -hmm. of of me growing up i mean some of my very very first that was really nice of yeah. her to do i wish i had something like that i know i wish you did too but it is what it is yep yep i wish you did too you know um and I think learning to forgive people, not ever letting them back in to repeat what they've done, but learning to forgive people that have really wronged you. you just In my heart, I forgive them and I wish them well. Not that I want to have a relationship with them, not that I want to ever repeat that or anything, but I do it for me. Because then, I don't know, to me, when I can forgive somebody, then I can set it to rest. You know, there's certain people you'll never forgive for certain actions, you know, and um, that's just the way that is. But anyway, this is just a, you know, a gratitude, Sunday gratitude, you know, being grateful for even if it's the smallest thing like you have clean drinking water, you know, you have enough food because Lord Almighty, we're all feeling it about the 
the food prices, you know, like Lord. Um, but, you know, just being grateful for life itself even. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to set the world on fire. Um, you know, but you can make it a good a, a gooder place. Mm -hmm. can make it a better place. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, and that's one of the things I still do is at least once a day, I got to listen to uh, Louis Armstrong. Do you listen to it every day? I do. What a wonderful world, you know. He was jamming out in his bedroom the other day, his new room, because uh, he was, uh, he had a speaker in there. Um, he gets sleep on his new mattress tonight. <laughs> That's exciting. And he'll have a lot more room than that twin bed, because Brad's a flopper at night, man. It's like when we did share a bed, we used to have this, this great big wa king water bed. Was it a California king? No. No. But, um, I just kind of slept clung, hanging on to the railing, because this, this boy, he can move all over the bed, especially his legs kind of do the sweeping. And he just kind of, and at that time, he used to have like what I call the toenails of death. <laughs> and even though I was the one that cut him, and you kind of like just keep your legs and stuff out of the way. You know, I'm shorter than him, so that helped. Um, but, yeah, it's just like, man, he can motate all over. He can tell now when he's moving too much because the dog gets mad and she gets off the bed because Nixie always sleeps with him. Unless we get up early in the morning because we can't sleep, then she stays back in my room. But uh, I remember uh, Bitsy. If uh, she was my little cat, she mm -hmm. was my little baby, and uh, if I if I move too much or if I snore too much, she would let me know that that was unacceptable behavior. And I know there was a few times when I'd be laying flat on my back snoring, and all of a sudden I'm getting smacked right in the mouth with her. Back. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yep. He wake up. Of course, the first thing he did was look at me. I'm like. Cat, not me. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <clears throat> yeah. But anyway, it's been a good day. Mm -hmm. It's important to realize where you come from. Things have gotten better. Yeah, maybe some things are not as you want them to be. Maybe you do wish you could turn back the hands of time 20 years ago. Not going to happen. You, you can be the best you can be now, though. You know, and there's always room for improvement, so... That's what we've been working on. Mm -hmm. Digital scale is just, pfft, I need to get a new one, but really don't want to pay the 20 bucks right now. Uh, you know, but we have two of them. Neither one of them read correctly. You know, the one, which is not a very old one, okay, finally we put new batteries in and it show, did show a little bit of weight loss, but tell you what, we... Like, our stomachs are a lot smaller than they were. I mean, you know, I can stand now and see my feet. Which is, I know, it's a big accomplishment, right? <clears throat> so can Brad. I can tell on him. He can tell on me. You know, so we know that, you know, we're losing weight. It's just, we don't have a scale that shows it. So, I have to go to my doctor on the 23rd for a general recheck. And I'm going to wait till I, I weigh in there. And then I'm going to ask her if maybe I could stop in once a, every couple of weeks or even once a month just to slip back in back and weigh myself. But I said he thinks that probably that's fine to do. Yeah. Well, you I'm know, sure. so I would love that because I really don't want to put out the money for another scale. And if it's not going to work correctly, you know, one scale... This one showed one time he got on, it showed he lost 20 pounds. The next time he got on, it showed he, he gained four. And this was two minutes apart weighing. And I'm like, what did you do to go up 24 pounds then? Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's well, crazy. The other one, we lost the little cover that holds the batteries in. Yeah, but still. Yeah, and I don't know if that's part of the reason why it's not working. Well, no, there's a reason why I bought another scale. Good point. Yeah, that one's really old, too. Yeah, it is. So, who knows? I, they need to go away. They need to be thrown away. You know, we're still working on purging extra stuff as we find. Maybe we have duplicates or whatever, donating. 
you know, and all of that, so, yep. So, anyway, I'm going to get off here. This is a long one, honey. This is 40 minutes. Holy smoke. Yeah. So, anyway, I love you guys, and I do cherish your uh, friendship so very much, and um, think about what you can be grateful for. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Say bye, Brad. Bye, Brad. Bye, guys.